Do you want to try Frontline for the free experience? That or you're mad enough to try for the achievements? But either way, this is the guide for you. Frontline consists of three teams of 24, all fighting to accomplish different goals depending on the map. Each map has a set amount of points required to win along with different ways to acquire points depending on said map, or by killing other players. Along with points, you also gain something called Battle High, indicated by this bar or this buff. The more Battle High you have, the more damage you do, starting at an extra 10% up to a max of 50%. To try and balance out the snowball that this can become, your standing affects your LP generation, meaning if you're in first, it builds slower, and if you're in last, it builds faster. The last passive effect built into Frontline is Damage Mitigation. All melee jobs take 60% less damage, and all ranged jobs take 30% less. They also reduce the damage of jobs if they feel they're getting too spicy. Now back to maps. There are a total of four maps that rotate out each day, starting with the Borderland Ruins, which is the most basic of the maps. And thanks to this, it's also the most balanced and the easiest to learn. Once the game starts, you want to make your way to the tower in the middle. After a few seconds, robots will begin to spawn and your team will be rewarded points depending on how much damage you do to these robots. After all the robots are dead, you go back down and start capturing the points to the left and right of your base. Once you capture one, you go to the other, at which point the enemy will capture the one you just left, so once you finish capturing the one you're at, you go back to the other. I call this the Borderlands Shuffle. Because you go to the left, then you go to the right, now back, now make it to the middle. This time, however, when you make it to the middle, something new will happen. After all the small robots die, a big one will spawn that gives significantly more points, so try to dump as much damage on it as you can. After that, it's back to the Borderlands Shuffle, going left and right over and over again until time runs out or someone wins. The next map is Seal Rock, and it involves capturing and guarding points. Sounds simple, right? Yet, this is the map people struggle with the most. Something about it just makes people murder hungry. This is the one map where you live and die by the objectives. Once the match starts, generally you'll have the North and South teams run at each other and begin killing one another, while the Cave team watches from afar. Every couple of minutes, shapes will randomly appear on your map. These are the points you need to capture. Triangles give a few points, squares give a moderate amount of points, and pentagons, they're your big prize giving a large amount of points. To capture a point, you need to interact with it for a few seconds without being attacked, or it's cancelled. Once a point is captured, it has to be captured twice by the other team to actually start getting points from it. This gives the team that initially captured the point a major advantage, as they can simply spam AoEs to cancel people attempting to capture. The next map on our list is the Fields of Glory, and the first thing you'll notice upon getting into the instance is if you look at your map, there's rocks scattered around the arena. After some time, rocks will randomly start to activate, and once destroyed, will give points similar to the robots from Borderlands Secure. The small rocks will give the same amount of points as the little robots, and the big crystals, which there are four of, will give the same amount of points as the big robot. There are a total of four big crystals on the map, one between each base and then one in the center. Each of the big crystals in between the bases would generally have one safe path for a given team as that is their crystal. Other than that safe path, the big crystals can also be accessed through the middle or by falling down a cliff near the opposing base. Now while the middle path may be the most accessible as it is generally where the teams are going to be located, it also creates a bottleneck meaning that if you want to safely make it to a crystal, it's best to go back to your base and take the side paths, even if it does take a little bit longer. Something to note with the cliff path is that it does put you in a kind of bad position, as not only do you have to fall down the cliff taking a large amount of damage, but there's also no obvious escape path. This is when you should remember that you can use return in frontline, and this is by far the best map to utilize it. So after you finish fighting at the crystal, start casting return so you don't get squished by the two other teams. The last of our available frontline maps is Ansal Hakar. It's basically a simpler Sil Rock, having you again capture points. However, once these points are captured, you get all the points. They can't be recaptured. Because of this, people, however, do tend to fight harder to capture these points. Most notably, the middle point where 90% of the fighting will take place as people really don't like letting that point be captured. In fact, it would generally outlast the other points that it spawns with. The biggest tip to winning this map is looking at the middle point as a secondary objective. With it taking so long to actually capture, it's generally better to focus on the other points, shifting your attention to the middle when there's nothing else to do. With the maps done, let's move on to some general tips. As mentioned before, Battle High is a passive buff that rewards players for getting kills and staying alive. 
Once you die, you lose a good chunk of your battle high, making you much weaker. For this reason, it's best to avoid dying as much as possible, and the best way to do that is to stay together with your team. In frontline, people do tend to move in packs, and being without your team is just asking to die. Moreover, because of the passive damage reduction, 1v1s are nearly impossible, especially for melee. The best way to win is to avoid splitting your team. While it may seem like a good idea to split for multiple objectives, it will in most cases just mean you're fighting two battles with half the people. And it's better to secure one objective than try for two and lose both. On to our next point, don't focus the losing team. This is easily the biggest mistake. Every time you get a kill, you steal points. And while the losing team may seem like easy points, it is a losing battle because they gain more from killing you than you do from killing them. Too often will the winning team or second place focus the losing team and as a result, the third team gets a massive point swing since they aren't being contested. Because of the nature of frontline, jobs that focus on single target damage struggle. Not only because of the passive damage reduction, but also because of the number of players. As a result, jobs with AoE excel, notably casters like Summoner who still are powerful despite getting a damage nerf. If you see someone on a mount, try to tag them with an attack. Doing this will cause them to be slowed for a good amount of time, making it easy to dogpile them or stop them from getting to objectives. If you notice your team is scattered or has no focus, an easy way to fix that is to link a coordinate for a given objective. Most people just follow it blindly, especially if you have a bongo macro. You can change your job at bases at any time, so if you feel one job not working for you, feel free to change it when you respawn or return to change. Moreover, when you queue in frontline, the job that you queue as is the one that gets the experience. So don't feel bad about switching jobs, as you still get the experience for the job you want. Well, that's the basics of frontline. but. One last word of wisdom, don't take Frontline too seriously. Generally speaking, you're only going to win about a third of your matches because there are three teams competing, and the chaotic nature of 72 people fighting means you're going to explode at times. Either that or be stunned for ages. So go in and have your own fun. Try to do the most damage as something like Summoner, or see how many chain assassinates you can get with Ninja. Hell, if it's Borderlands, try to knock people off the tower of Machinist. Do what you want, because if you don't, you're not going to enjoy it.